We have multiple bright regions on the Earth-facing disk that are flare active, and the sun keeps launching solar storms. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Our sun begins to look like its old self again as it continues to ramp up activity in this new solar cycle. As we take a look at the Earth-facing disk, you can see region 2780 and region 2781 as they continue to fire off little mini solar storms and keep firing off these C-class flares as they begin to rotate off of the, the sun's west limb. But the thing is, is that they're almost like they're handing the torch over to yet a new region. This is region 2782 that's coming into view in the south and no sooner than it comes into view than wham it fires off a non-earth directed solar storm and it fires off several c-class flares so it looks like the fun is continuing with these regions and we've got even a few more on the sun's far side that'll be rotating into view soon so we're continuing to see solar flux be boosted which is good news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders and we're continuing to see solar storms being launched which is good news to aurora photographers so it looks like good news is all around and on top of that we do have a small equatorial coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone, and that could give a little aurora at high latitudes. So it's a, like a little warmer before we get these big solar storms that we're looking forward to for aurora to come down to mid latitudes. So everybody hold on tight because it looks like solar cycle 25 is finally getting underway. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, as we take a look at the X-ray flux, you can see at the end of the month, we started to watch that uh, X-ray flux rise a little bit, and therefore, by proxy, the solar flux rose right along with it. This was from region 2780 and region 2781, as they began to emerge and start firing off these mini flares, and also mini solar storms, believe it or not. And by the fourth and the fifth, my goodness, the uh, X-ray flux was sitting right around the seafloor, that was without any flares being fired, and they kept popping off a few C-class flares here and there, but then things began to die down just a little bit, and as they died down, well, Region 2782 rotated into view, and sure enough, the C-class flares have picked up yet again. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, all of this C-class noise, you're hearing probably some sizzle and pops on the bands. Nothing like radio blackouts because we haven't reached that M-flare threat level yet. However, it, all this noise is worth the trouble because it's also boosting radio propagation on Earth's day side. And with Region 2782 that's now rotated into view, it's it's all going to be worth it, and these condi conditions are going to continue easily over the next week. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see we've actually been pretty quiet over the last week or more. In fact, the last time we actually even reached active conditions was clear back at the end of October. Since then, we've been hovering between unsettled conditions and even quiet conditions. We've had a couple mini solar storms being fired from region 2780 and 2781 that have brought us up to unsettled conditions and then back down to quiet conditions, but it's really not been as much as we need to really bring some decent aurora down to mid-latitudes. So we've been kind of dealing with that, and in fact, the coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone and sending us some fast solar wind here over the next couple days most likely is going to give us just more of the same. So expect some decent aurora at high latitudes, but mid-latitude viewers, well, yeah, it's going to be, a, you know, catch as you can, because it's really not going to be a very strong burst of fast wind to give us any sustained aurora. And likely these conditions will continue over the next week. However, we are watching region 2780 because it did just fire off a solar storm. So if we keep our fingers crossed, we may get an Earth-directed storm soon. And although we haven't had many solar storms as of late, if this solar activity keeps up, it won't be long now. But until then, as promised, I'm going to catch you up on some recent aurora photos from the solar storms that have been occurring over the last couple weeks, like these gorgeous shots in Norway. And we've had some beautiful aurora in Finland. And it was seen in multiple places in Sweden. And it was seen in multiple places in Shetland in the UK. It was also seen in Norfolk. 
and at Scotland. And as we begin to travel over the pond, it was seen in multiple places in Iceland. And as we travel over into the Western Hemisphere, it was seen in many places in Canada. Here's some gorgeous shots from Manitoba. And it was also seen in Saskatchewan, as well as some beautiful shots in Alberta. And it dropped down into the United States in multiple places. It was seen in several places in, in uh, North Dakota. And it was also seen in Minnesota. And it even made it to Washington State. And even though the weather has been terrible down under, and this year has been an awful year for aurora photos, the aurora did make a peekaboo showing in New Zealand. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun, well, just a little bit from the side. And as we take a look at Stereo's view, you can see region 2780 and region 2781 as they rotate off of Stereo's west limb. And take a look at region 2782 in the south around center disk. It's got a region above it, but that's not really a sunspot region, but that likely is helping destabilize region 2782 and helping it fire off these solar storms. So we do have that that's just beginning to rotate into Earth view now and look behind it. Oh my goodness, the southern hemisphere is lit up like a Christmas tree. We have yet another region that's going to be rotating into Stereo's view here in the next day or so and it looks like it could be flare active. So my goodness, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, that solar flux on Earth's day side is going to stay easily in the marginal range, possibly creating up to the good range here pretty soon so you don't have to worry about radio propagation over the next week and aurora photographers it looks like we might have another chance for yet more solar storm producers so there might be an earth directed solar storm in your future switching to our moon we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon with the new moon being on the 15th so you night sky watchers now's a great time to catch those dim objects in the sky Switching to our solar storm and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the fast solar wind from that small coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone, but don't expect all that much from this region. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 20% chance of a major storm, but it's most likely going to be pretty fleeting. Now, at mid latitudes, we're also expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 15% chance of active conditions. Once again, the aurora should be fleeting if it makes it down to mid latitudes at all. But as things begin to calm down from that fast solar wind over the next two or three days, well, you never know. We, ha we do have region 2782, which is an active solar storm producer, so these conditions could change very quickly and aurora photographers, you're just going to need to keep your fingers crossed. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have multiple bright regions in Earth view, including regions 2781 and 2782, and these are flare active. We've got about a 25% chance of C-class flares, but a very low chance for M-class flares, so that means everything remains in the green. We have no issues and no worries for radio blackouts right now, and that should make GPS users very happy. But these regions are boosting that solar flux up into the mid 80s we are enjoying well into marginal radio propagation on earth's day side and with a couple regions that are going to be rotating into earth view over the next couple days these conditions will easily continue throughout this week and likely into next week so amateur radio operators enjoy we could actually be getting to pop into the good region here pretty soon for radio propagation so keep your fingers crossed now also because we are still climbing out of solar minimum the cosmic ray flux is still elevated higher than we'd like it to be. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes, you are still in the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. 
So the space weather this week is definitely keeping us on our toes. We have multiple bright regions in Earth view. Uh, several of them are sunspots, region 2780 and 2781, and now 2782 has joined the fray. And these regions have been firing off some decent sized flares. None of them have been M-class flares, but we've gotten close a couple times. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, if you're hearing some pops and fizzles on the bands, don't worry, it's not your rig. It's just the sun waking up. We with these new bright regions that are deciding to talk to you a little bit. is kind of a nice reminder that the sun actually does wake up every, you know, seven years or so. So enjoy that. We are having decent uh, radio propagation on Earth's day side, and that's going to continue easily over the next week before things even think about calming down, and it doesn't look like they're going to. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Now also, uh, Aurora photographers, you should be kind of like holding tight because we don't have any Earth-directed solar storms right now. We do have some sm a small pocket of fast solar wind that is going to hit Earth over the next couple days, bring some aurora down to high latitudes, probably not mid latitudes. However, we did have a non-Earth directed solar storm be fired by region 2782. And as that region begins to rotate into the Earth strike zone here over the next couple days, it may fire off yet another solar storm and that one will be Earth directed. So we're going to keep our fingers crossed and hope that Aurora is in your future. Future. And now also GPS users, well, you know, right now we don't have any solar storms headed towards Earth. And even though that solar flux is climbing a little bit, we don't have any big M-class flares to cause radio blackouts for any issues for you. So as long as you stay away from the dawn dust terminators and away from any aurora, especially at high latitudes, your GPS reception should be pretty good. I'm Tamitha Sko, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.